This week on Maker Update, a magic mirror, Norwegian arm, pixels for your pocket, and dialing for songs. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update, a show where we show you cool stuff makers are making. That's the show. That's what we do here. It's good to be back. Uh, let's get started with the project of the week. For years, I've been curious to try making a smart mirror. I just figured the longer I wait, the better options I'll have. Well, that time might be now because Becky Stern has a great guide on how she put one together. The core of the project is a Raspberry Pi running the free open source Magic Mirror 2 software, which now has hundreds of user contributed modules that you can configure. I also like that she added these two strips of LED lights behind the two-way mirror glass. That's a nice touch that also feels relatively futuristic to me and my humble expectations around mirrors. I think another reason why Magic Mirror projects appeal to me is that they're a great way to repurpose an old monitor or TV. I see these on the curb all the time and I wonder what I could use them for. A Magic Mirror seems like a great answer. Go check out Becky's video to see if it's right for you. Now for some news, Hackaday and DigiKey have teamed up for a sci-fi project contest. Three winners will win a $150 shopping spree with DigiKey. All you need to do is design and submit a project that's sci-fi themed and somehow electric. The deadline is Monday, April 25th. You can find all the contest details using the link in the description. Now for more projects on Instructables, the Garage Avenger shows how he made this motorized Lazy Susan in an attempt to neutralize what he calls Norwegian arm. To hear it from him, his Norwegian family has a tendency to unapologetically reach across the table to grab food. This CNC cut plywood conveyor belt should address the problem, logically, but you'll have to watch the video to see how it turned out. This one really got me thinking of additions and modifications you could build into it. I think it would be neat to have some kind of touchless sensor that people could use to start and stop the conveyor belt so it doesn't have to run all the time. But with all that stopping and starting, you need to build in some kind of acceleration curve so things don't go crashing off. Maybe you could play a little song when it goes around. Maybe you could make it respond to voice commands. I don't know, but it just seems like it's ripe for someone to come in and take it to the next level. There's also a great pair of new project guides on Adafruit. The first is from the Ruiz Brothers on making a digital Etch-A-Sketch. What I love about this project is that it's a great one for beginners and has a little bit of everything. There's a 3D printed snap fit enclosure which looks like an easy satisfying print. There's a little greatest hits of components. You get two pots, a momentary button and a toggle switch. The code is in CircuitPython and is extensively commented to make it easy to customize and to be able to see what's really going on. It all runs on an Adafruit Feather M4, which allows you to drag and drop your code right to the board with no Arduino IDE to mess with. And then in the end, you get this unique little pocket gizmo. And sure, it's not gonna keep you entertained too long, but it's cool enough to show off because no one else is gonna have one. So if you're a beginner or you know someone who's looking for a project that's a step beyond the typical micro bit classroom stuff, this looks like a fun, low stakes project to sink your teeth into. For something more involved, I really enjoyed John Park's guide on turning an old touch-tone phone into a mini jukebox. Here's another one of those objects you'll come across, or maybe you're already hoarding one, and you wonder what to do with it. Not only does John show you how to rewire an old matrix keypad like this and connect it up to the Feather RP2040 microcontroller, but he goes on to wire up the earpiece and the cradle switch so that you can really make use of all the old hardware. The project reminded me of one of my old favorites, Fuzzy Wobble's payphone jukebox hack, which I'll also link to. But in John's, everything has been simplified, especially since the RP2040 can handle native playback of WAV files. Now, I can't imagine that you can fit a lot of audio on here, but if you wanted a simple way to turn an old phone into an escape room prop or have a few recorded messages or sounds, this is a clear and direct way to accomplish that. Now for a couple quick tips and tools. On YouTube, Stumpy Nubs has a great video on how to cut complementary curves on two pieces of wood stock and get them to match up perfectly with no gaps. With just a little extra prep, 
some templates, and a few different sizes of bearing for your flush trim bit, you can eliminate the gaps that are common for this type of joint. And back over on Adafruit, Liz Clark offers a great resource for anyone interested in creating a CircuitPython project that interacts with MIDI. Whether you want to create your own MIDI keyboard or controller or sequencer for triggering music, or if you want to take MIDI signals and translate them into motor, solenoid, or servo movement, this multi-part guide covers it all. It also links out to all of the great MIDI projects that Liz has created over the years. It's a terrific resource. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, I went digging through all of DigiKey's useful online tools and I found one I hadn't noticed before. It's a calculator for dialing in the exact output pulse you want from a 555 timer chip. Just replace the resistor and capacitor values until you get the pulse width you're looking for. The calculator includes a toggle for monostable and A-stable modes. It seems like a handy tool to know about. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, Leave a comment if you want. Uh, you can get on the Maker Update email list so that you never miss a show. A big thanks to DigiKey Electronics for making this whole thing possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.